What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Zero to Diamond podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Carruth. I'm on a mission to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry by helping you master your skills on the phone, conquer your fears, and changing your mindset. Now, let's get into the show. Up, what is up, guys? On Facebook, I'm live on Instagram. I'm live on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. This is Ricky Carruth. Welcome to this week's show. Um, I don't have a guest this week, which was really kind of cool because it gave me an opportunity just to connect with you guys one on one. Um, we can do, as I used to call, Ask Ricky Live, kind of an old school thing. Um, so real quick, I want to give a moment to let everybody kind of log on and, and get on the program. But uh, this is going to be a live q and I'm going to make some announcements today. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of different things. I'm also going to talk about why I think real estate is a win-win situation in every single scenario. And I want to hear feedback from you guys about, you know, different scenarios you might have had that you feel like was a huge loss and that uh, didn't really go your way. Um, that kind of held you down. I want to hear what that situation is so I can tell you why it's not a loss. So we're going to get into that shortly. Um, while I'm waiting on a lot of people to log in and, and join the live feeds, um, I did want to kind of talk about the Alabama Awards Banquet real quick. Just want to touch on it briefly. Monday was the Remax Alabama Awards Banquet. Um, I wasn't really expecting to get number one, uh, and I'll tell you what happened. This year was the first year that they split up the teams. See, I know there's a lot of confusion because I talk about being a single agent, and I do operate as solely a single agent, and all the numbers that I give you guys is based on my single agent stats. I don't talk about my team uh, stats, okay? So me and my father are classified as a team in the REMAX system. Um, so we're, we compete against teams and we're classified as a team. We operate as two single agents. Any of you guys that have been following me, um, you know that I, I went live. I had a live show with my father. I brought him on. We talked about everything, our philosophy, um, kind of why we go single agent instead of being a team. And so, you know, everybody can go back and watch that if they want to really, you know, um, if they have any doubt that me and my dad operate as a single agent but we're classified as a team. So when we get our REMAX awards, we're a team and we're competing with teams that have 15, 20 agents on the team. And so normally we hit number one once in 2014. Since then, we've been three, four, five for a couple of years because we're competing against such big teams. So this year was the first year they actually split it up and did teams that are five members and lower and then all the bigger teams. So they split it up, small teams and big teams. We had no idea they were going to do that. So, of course, when they split up the teams and make small teams a category and big teams a category, you know, we're going to be number one. There's no doubt about that. Now that they made that a category, I feel like we're probably going to own that category for a long time. Um, so that, that kind of gets me hyped up a little bit. It gives me something to really grind a little bit harder for because I really want to hold that spot just, just so I can. I don't care about rankings. It's not a big deal all that stuff, but it sure does feel good when it's just another reason to give it everything you got, if you know what I mean. So now that they made a category around small teams, I really want to crush that. And I'm glad they did it because it gave me a little extra incentive. So um, we did walk on stage as number one in transactions and volumes for the one to five member teams. There, of course, are bigger teams that did more volume than us. But like I said, that's seven man teams, 15 man teams and 20 man teams. That, uh, that we're up against. So I actually outsold many, many, many teams by myself. So I'm not saying all this to brag or toot my horn or anything. I just want you guys to understand how that all kind of played out and why it is why, why it is, what it is. So now that I have a bunch of people on Facebook and I got a lot of people on Instagram, um, a couple of announcements to make real quick. Hold on, let me get a coffee. A couple of announcements I want to make right quick before I get into the content of today's show. And like I said, guys, you, you know, I'm starting to have um, guests on the show, interview guests. So 
every once in a while when I don't have a guest, I'm going to come one-on-one -on -one with you guys. So I want you to take advantage of it and ask me questions during this time. Um, but a couple of announcements I want to make. Next week, March 1st, the um, Zero to Diamond podcast show, the same as this, just next week, where I'm going to have Joshua Smith on the program. Joshua Smith is a GSD mode guy. He's a real estate coach. He has the 90 day mastery program. He is a team leader out in Phoenix. His team did over $4 million uh, in commissions and he's just an absolute animal. So I'm really uh, happy to have him on the program next week. So that's going to be really good. I'll announce it and you know, he'll be on. Well, you guys can ask him questions. It's going to be ask, ask him anything type deal. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm glad he accepted the offer. I was on his show a while back, and uh, and so I asked him to be on mine in return, and he had absolutely was happy to do it. So we're looking forward to having him on the show. Also, um, I have a speaking event in, in Ocala, Florida, which is uh, about an hour south of Gainesville. That's going to be March 21st. So if any of you guys are like in the Orlando, uh, you know, mid-Florida, you know, South Florida Panhandle, you know, I don't know if you're anywhere around Gainesville or if you can get to Gainesville, it's called the Breakfast of Champions. It's going to be March 21st in Ocala, Florida. I'll be there. I'll eat breakfast. I'll do a talk. I'll do a live Q&A and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I know there's some coaching members that are there already. John Hamrick is uh, one of them. And uh, so, but I know that there's probably some agents out in uh, Orlando and stuff that can make it over. So I'm looking really forward to doing that. And I'm working on many, many more speaking events. So as I get them, as I book them, I'll let you guys know. And, uh, you know, that way you guys, we can, we can hang out. Cause I like to meet you guys, you know, uh, for dinner the night before or hang out afterwards or whatever. So we can have some one-on-one -on -one time. Also um, next week after the show with Joshua Smith, I'm going to do our next zero to diamond coaching session. This is going to be a super intense coaching session. Um, I'm going to go through exactly how to communicate with sellers to create that lifelong relationship. And I'm going to talk about how to effectively follow up with them forever. You know, the way that I do it, in my program, and I'm, I'm also going to kind of add a little bonus content with door knocking. Um, exactly how I feel like you guys should be communicating door knocking. So real quick, I want to touch on the communication with property owners. This is something that, I, that I'm really seeing a lot of um, from the beginning of starting this coaching career and speaking and writing and really paying attention to other agents and other markets and what they're learning as they're starting and how they're communicating with sellers. What I'm finding is that most agents have really super good intentions. Um, their intentions are really, really good. They're, they're good people. They care about people. They want to help. They're professional, knowledgeable, they go over the top. They're actually really incredibly genuine realtors that really want to help. Um, you know, which, which is what, what clients want. They want a realtor that, um, they know they can trust that that's dependable, that works hard. You know, these are all the fundamentals of a really, really good agent. And that's what clients want. The problem is the way that most of us have been trained to talk, to actually communicate, um, doesn't line up with our intentions and how we actually feel. In other words, if you know you have the greatest intentions of the world and you know you really want to help someone, but the questions you're asking and the way that you're communicating with the sellers do not line up with your real intentions, that's a problem. And so what I'm really trying to teach people right now and really trying to coach people through is how to communicate with sellers, your true intentions of actually helping people and actually caring about them. Um, I feel like this is a really, really big thing because a lot of agents that are newer in the business and even been there a while that don't understand this concept, they're leaving a lot of money on the table because they're not effectively communicating how, how great they actually are and how good of an agent they actually are because their language kind of leans towards the fact that they're just trying to get a listing or they're just trying to get a sale or they're just trying to see if they want to buy a property when really the true question should be, is there anything I could do to help you? And so we're really going to dive deep into this next week. 
um, for all the coaching members. Um, after the after the uh, podcast with Joshua Smith next week, I'm going to switch over to the private coaching group and we're going to dive into this. I'm really going to go deep with how to effectively communicate with sellers, not only to effectively communicate how you really feel. Right. But also how to follow up and how to door knock. And also communicating how you really feel it, when, when you're when you're new or if you're struggling in real estate and you and your, your, your communication doesn't really line up with your personality. You feel like you're pressuring people too much. You feel like that you're just not, you're something's off and they're just, you're just not really in there. I mean, you don't feel like it's really you. You maybe sound like all the other agents. You sound like a robot and you're just trying to pressure people into doing things. I'm going to teach you how to go low pressure and actually effectively communicate your message of, Hey, I'm here to help you. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so Joshua Smith's on the program next week. Um, I'm going to be in Ocala, Florida on the 21st of March. Um, if you guys are around the area, let me know. And uh, the coaching session that next week, March 1st, will be after the Joshua Smith podcast. And if you guys aren't following me on YouTube, I think it's one of the single, uh, you know, most fun, fundamentalist things that, that you need to be doing. I mean, this could be the, the biggest fundamental mistake is that you're not following me on YouTube because I'm starting to really get good at YouTube with communicating my message of how to actually be, succeed in this business. So definitely follow me there. If you're not also Instagram, um, a lot of great content there as well. So I want to get into why real estate is a win-win. OK, everything in real estate is a win win. So I want to get into this. Um, if you guys have any questions, right, type it in on Facebook, type it in on Instagram. Um, if there's any questions you have for me, you've got me for another 45 minutes. Ask me anything you want to ask me. And um, this is your time. So. With real estate, let's see, Andrew, let's see if there's any questions real quick before I get started. Andrew says your YouTube videos are very, very helpful. Thanks, man. Robert Smith says, Ricky. Tim says, I'm showing houses. Can I watch later? Absolutely, Tim. This will be live. This You can watch this on Facebook or Instagram. Instagram for the next 24 hours, Facebook forever. Christina says, howdy from Texas. Andy Naper. What's up? What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? OK, Brent says, uh, do I call cell numbers? Yeah, I call cell numbers. Why not? Craig says, when you first started, how long did you call a day? I called all day long when I first started in real estate all day long. I dialed every day. If there's a moment that that I wasn't meeting somebody or showing property or uh, writing letters or if I didn't have anything else going on, I was making calls. Jimmy Kim says, have I tried coal realty instead of red X? No, um, I have not tried coal. You know, if it, the thing is with all this guys, if you, if you try something and you like it, use it. Um, I like red X. I've tried um, different things. Red X is my favorite so far. You know, let's see, let's see, let's see. When you use red X, does it call cell phones or just landlines? It has um, cell phones are in there mixed up in there. Some of the numbers are cell phone numbers. Uh, let's see, John Krause, what's been the best time of day with getting people to answer? I call between nine and 12 because that's when my mind is absolutely the sharpest. And so that's when I call. I've had a lot of people call on Saturdays and say that's a really good day. A lot of people call after hours, you know, they get a lot of success there. I like to call when my mind is the sharpest, which is between nine and 12. I want to be on top of my game when I talk to people. So it's kind of a user friendly thing. It's whatever you think works best for you. Um, you know, I don't think that there's a right or wrong answer here. I think just do it right. Um, let's see. Derek says, if you don't have a just soul, what's the next go to script that you prefer? I prefer just you call around any just sold. It can be any just sold, not you're just sold. It can be any other agent. It can be any, um, anything, any, any for sale by owner. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be your deal. Okay. So don't worry about that. Cause what you're saying is, is, Hey, a house sold. Is there anything I can do for you? 
Let's see. Craig says, hey, Ricky, what CRM do you recommend? I see your question on Instagram, Marky Mark. Hold on one second. CRM, I don't really have a CRM myself, so I can't really recommend one. I would say just pick one and go. I think people are spending way too much time trying to figure out what CRM to use, and you just need to just go. Just pick one and go. I don't think it really matters, to tell you the truth. Let's see. Let's see. Hold on, guys. I'm going through the questions, making sure I'm not missing out anything. Okay. Jeff says, we visited about this on Facebook. I'm going through a realtor database of clients, 3,000 to 4,000. How would you tackle those? I uh, don't understand the question. What is this about, Jeff? We visited about this on Facebook. I'm trying to remember that. I'm going through a realtor's client data. Oh, 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 an old realtor. They gave you their database. How would I tackle those? I would literally just call them up and say, hey, this is Jeff Dodson at ABC Realty. You know, a house down the road sold. Is there anything I could do for you? There's no magic to it, guys. No magic to it. Let me know if that doesn't. Let me know if any of the answers that I'm answering doesn't clear up anything. Please comment and let me know. I'll go deeper. Okay, on Instagram. Marky Mark says, Ricky, my question at the moment is what if the best, what is the best way to truly learn your market area and how to use that information to your advantage? MLS, Marky Mark, go through your MLS to pull up the last year of sales in your area and go through them with the fine tooth comb and then look at all the pending sales, look at everything active. Um, if you want to, you can look at expireds and really dig deeper. <clears throat> um, look at the tax records, uh, you know, see what people paid for properties back in 05. You know, that was the peak of the market. Um, you know, try to compare the market to 05 to the bottom of the market in 2010 and 11 and then where the market is now and kind of gauge where, where you are in terms of, you know, the peak of the market. But your MLS is going to be your friend on that, man. And then from there, just having that database of knowledge in your head will help you when you're just out in public talking to people and they ask you something and you know it because you've, you, you, you're staying on top of it. The second thing you need to do is to look at all the new listings and close sales and everything that happen every day. Um, new new listings, close sales, pending deals, all the all the stuff that happens on a daily basis. You need to be looking at that on a daily basis so you're on top of it. See, that's brand new information. That's something that nobody has, right? As a new realtor, now you have something nobody has. You know exact. You know what's new before most other people know what's new because you're watching it. So use that to your advantage. Use the use the fact that you know before even the older, more experienced agents, you know before they know, because you're watching it like a hawk. Because they're too, excuse me, they're too busy selling stuff. So, um, so you 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 have time to actually watch MLS. So you look at the new listings and pending sales and closed sales. You know the market better than the experienced agents. That's something I'm lacking on right now, is keeping up with new stuff because I'm so busy. I'm so busy selling that I don't have time to really study the market like I used to. And so I'm sure there's agents out there that know that that new listing, newly pending, newly closed sales a little bit better than me. So that's an advantage they have. I hope that answers your question, Marky Mark. Please just let me know if uh, if you want me to go deeper on it. So another. Um, Instagram. I'm going to get to you guys on Facebook. Uh, Agent Tim Rush says tips for the transition from being on a team to an individual agent. This is a good question. Thank you for the question. This is a question about transitioning from being on a team to being an individual agent. I think that this is a really good thing because I think a lot of newer agents, it's okay to be on a team and learn the ropes. I think that a lot of people end up staying there forever, but I think if you're going to be the high achiever, the top producer, number one in your area, all that, you need to be learning. You need to take that opportunity and know that this is a learning process that you're going through. So you take everything that happened through the team, all the deals you did, you watch the team, you watch the team leader, you watch, and then you watch some single agents. You need to learn from a lot of different people, not just don't be so, you know, narrow minded or, or, or zero in focused on, who you're learning from, learn from everybody, 
learn everything you can and then start picking and choosing and you'll soon develop your own little style of how you believe that you're going to succeed as a single agent. And so it's different for everybody is really the answer. There's not like a, a an equation that works for everyone, right? Everybody succeeds differently. Uh, real Everybody's real estate success is like a fingerprint. Nobody's is the same. Nobody's is the same. It's different. So you really need to just don't go too early. Make sure that, you know, you, you, you feel super confident that you can make the sales, that you can do what you need to do to succeed. And don't don't think that you have to do it so fast, but don't wait forever. You know, learn, learn, learn. Learning is the biggest thing. So my question would be how long you've been in business, how many sales have you made and all that stuff. You know, so we'd have to go a little deeper for your specific situation. But I would say make sure that you've learned a lot and that you feel super confident. Nick says, do I scrub uh, my numbers against the do not call list? I don't. I don't worry about the do not call list. I'm not telling you guys to worry about the do not call list, but I don't worry about the do not call list because I'm not really trying to sell anything. I'm trying to build relationships. I'm asking what I can do to help them. All right. Back on Facebook. Bavan, how you doing, buddy? Any tool available to create weekly email reports? I create all of mine my own. I don't I don't hire that out myself. Um, you know, I don't hire that out. That's something I want to do myself because I want all my clients to have a little bit of my personality in that email. And I want to really make it my own. And so I do it myself. Um, but Bavan, Bavan is is a is a coaching member. So Bavan, let's get together and I'll work with you one on one on any problems you're having with that. Okay, Connor, here we go. I'm in a market of about 15,000 people. There are plenty of realtors in the market and a few of them seem to have a lock on their referrals and past clients. As a newer realtor, uh, as a newer realtor was in the best plan of it. What's the best plan of attack for me to get listings? Connor, what do you mean here? 15,000 people. Is that the population? Um, I think you're saying that, that the 15,000 people is the population of your area. And so let's just talk about that real quick. If that's the case, you can maybe give me a thumbs up if that's the case. But basically, um, it doesn't matter. OK, here's the thing. If if an agent has a lockdown on a particular subdivision or particular clients or this and that, number one, that's in your head. OK, he says population. Number one, that's in your head. OK, because nobody has a lockdown on everybody. OK, nobody. Um, the second thing is, let's just say that they do have a lockdown on on a subdivision or a lot. Most of the population or whatever. OK, here's a couple of opportunities for you. Number one, um, if, if, if there, I love it when an agent is dominant in a certain complex or area and all the other agents are scared to go in there because they're, they know that, that that agent is dominant. That's an opportunity because there's less competition, number one, because there's not as many agents going after the same property. OK, number two, if that's the only agent that's really working that area, OK, there's going to be a lot of owners who are looking for an alternative agent. Right. Not everybody wants to deal with that guy or girl. OK, not everybody wants to. There's a lot of people that don't like that agent for whatever reason. Right. And the fact is they haven't talked to you yet, Connor. You are different than those guys. OK, those guys are, are, are big. You're still small. I'm guessing you're still starting out. OK, you have a lot of attention. You can give people more attention than the bigger guys. Right. So a lot of people are looking for an agent that has that extra time that can give them that extra attention that the busy agent can. not There's a lot of different ways to look at it, man. And I'm glad you brought this up because I was, uh, you know, the, the whole thesis of today's show is that real estate is a win win in every situation. And this is a prime example um, that this is a win win. You go after them. You don't worry about that other agent that's dominating everything. You find people that you connect with and you do the work and you put your database together and you make it happen. There's really no excuse here. This is this is a classic excuse. Hey, there's a realtor that's dominating my area. 
there's a realtor that that has all the business and there's none for us guys listen business is a hundred percent unlimited you cannot do all the business that's available for you and that agent cannot do all the business that's there for him right there's actually more than enough for everybody if there were more agents there would be more transactions because there would be more agents calling and trying you know developing relationships and making stuff happen there's no shortage of business the other side of it is that a lot of agents don't get this. They think there is a shortage of business, so they don't go after it because they think there's none there for them. And then they end up getting out of the business. And that's what creates an overage of business where there's more than we can handle for the guys that understand that there's more than you can handle. <clears throat> so Connor, I want you to absolutely eliminate that thought from your mind. And I want you to move forward. I want you to talk to 10 to 20 property owners today and say, Hey, how can I help you? Right. And if, and if nothing right now, let's stay in touch. Right. I would love the opportunity to work with you in the future. Is it okay if I stayed in touch? All right. Let's see. Let's see. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Let me know that you guys can hear me. Okay. Okay, on Instagram, Mark T. Mark says, I have 20 clients looking to sell in the next year or two. What info should I provide when I follow up to show that I have their best interest in mind? Just provide new market information all the time. Show them closed sales, pendings, under contracts, new listings. Um, show them, um, you know, ask them out to lunch, hang out with them. Don't try to pressure them into doing deals. You know, um, you know, I think the low pressure approach is the biggest thing. I think that that's where you're really going to win people over by providing value and not trying to get them to close a deal. That's going to show them that you really, really care. All right, let's get into some of these other questions. Mike Moore says, is it okay to hyper focus on absentee owners? Yes. Okay. Let me dive into, let me, let me dive into guys, this, this real estate is a win-win thing. Okay. Because the first thing I want you to know about real estate being a win-win is that everything works. Everything. Hold on guys. Let me get rid of that call. All right. Every single thing works. Okay. Let's go through it for sale by owners work, expires work, circle prospecting works, door knocking works, mailings work, Facebook works, Zillow works. Uh, what else we got? Sign calls, uh, newspaper, Craigslist. Um, you know, everything works. Absentee owners, primary condos, commercial lots, hunting land, uh, developing, uh, subdivisions, uh, building houses, everything works. Okay. Everything, nothing doesn't work. You just have to go. Right. And as a new agent, you need to try everything, figure out what works best for you and what doesn't work best for you and funnel it down to the best two or three things that work the best for you and then start crushing it. Right. I want you to dominate. I want you to incredibly just annihilate the competition. And so back to your question about, <clears throat> is it okay to hyper focus on absentee owners? Yes. Hyper focus on anything you want, right? I think the biggest thing is, is just to hyper focus, hyper focus on anything. It doesn't matter. The first part of the question is, is it okay to hyper focus, which is yes to anything. And then on FC owners, you can, you can interchange that with anything. Is it okay to hyper focus on circle prospecting? Yes. Is it okay to hyper focus on Facebook? Yes. Is it okay to hyper focus on, you know, internet leads? Yes. Is it okay to hyper focus on for sale by owners? Yes. It's okay to hyper focus on anything. Just go. I think too many people are asking too many questions and not taking enough action. That's the problem. <clears throat> Kyle Brown says, how do I keep track of my past clients and keep up on those relationships without a CRM? I send a weekly email to them every single week on the same day forever, period. Then I don't have to worry about it. They call me when they get ready to do something. Craig Moore says, so it doesn't matter when it's sold. If it was three months ago, you can still use the same script. Yes, it doesn't matter when it's sold. 
just say some say something sold or something went under contract or something uh <clears throat> you know is newly listed is there anything i could do to help you boom you're done keep moving on uh let's see let's see i love the questions guys keep them coming on instagram too keep the questions coming Craig Cox says, I would like to form a demographic such as doctors more than a geographical area. Does that work as well as farming neighborhoods? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I mean, yes, like I said, anything works. Hyper focus on it. Do it. Don't let me tell you nothing that, it, that it's not better. OK, I'm just giving you my answer, <clears throat> which is if you're going to if you're going to go after doctors that own property in your area. Great go if you're just doing doctors in general I, I don't know what you mean by that doctors thing like are you going after doctors i don't know what you mean by this what would you do with doctors please please clarify please 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 explain chip says don't forget send out cards works guys <clears throat> if you haven't done the send out cards thing and checked it out <clears throat> look it up and do that because it's really incredible. I've got some around here that Chip and Betty send me. Another agent sent me. Uh, it's really amazing. It's really a, a really incredible personal touch to um, to giving people that that just personal touch about uh, you know like you get brownies, cookies. You know, it's a personalized card that's super professional looking. So you guys really need to check that out. I think they have a system where it'll send it to them every birthday and anniversary and stuff. You really need to check it out. It's really good. All right. Craig says, I have a detailed list of doctors, etc., in my area. I would say hit it. Don't, you know, focus everything on it. You always want to do a lot of things, right? And try everything and then filter it down to the two or three things that work best. I think that's what's smart. So yes, go for it. Hit it as hard as you can. Call them, email them, talk to them, do everything you can do to contact those doctors and see what you can do to help them. Andy says, when I pull geo leads, I'm getting a lot of fax numbers and Skype numbers. Do you have good luck with Skype numbers? I've never called Skype numbers. Um, Andy, are you doing single dial or triple dial? I can't remember what your what your thing is on that. Give me let me know if you're doing a uh, single dial or triple dial. Mike Moore says it, it's been awesome doing it for a month now. Let's see. Oh, absentee owners. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. And, OK, so so he says, hey. Mike, Mike asked me a question. Should I stay hyper focused on absentee owners? And then later on, he just said, it's it's awesome. Been doing it for a month now. So if, if you're doing awesome in it, then you don't have to ask me if it's OK to do it. Right. If something works, then do it. Let's see. Pettigay said, I found sending out cards hard to create in the initial card, so I gave up on it. You might want to get with Chip on that. Chip, you might want to get with Pettigay. Adam Yeager, <clears throat> I see you guys on uh, Instagram. I'll be right with you. Adam Yeager says, I just started at Lake Martin, Alabama. I've been following your steps about just taking action and not asking so many questions. My problem is my budget. I have tackled Facebook and I have a, web a website being constructed. <coughs> Where did you focus the majority of your marketing dollars when you first started? I had zero marketing dollars when I first started. I didn't have a website or anything. Email is free and phone calls were free. I looked people's phone numbers up on whitepages.com and I dialed them off my cell phone that I was already paying the hundred dollars a month for. I started out with zero and you know, I started doing deals and then I eventually got a website that was really cheap and, and not that great. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> he said, bless me. Um, so I didn't have any marketing dollars when I first started. I didn't need any. I could call people for free and I could email people for free. So if you don't have any dollars, do it like that. Right. You don't have to do any anything. I mean, I could literally 
start from scratch, not spend any money and build a million dollar a year real estate business from nothing. Don't need anything. If you don't have it now, you can spend some money, and make some things easier, right? But if you don't have it, you can absolutely crush it and make hundred thousand dollars your first year, $200 your second year, $300,000 your third year with no budget. Okay, Jeff, let's see what you got, man. If someone tells you, you can stay in contact with them, but they have no interest in moving in the next 10 years. Um, you do more than send them an email. See, some of these comments are typed out weird. So sorry guys, I'm having trouble reading them, but do you more, I guess he's saying, do you do more than send them an email once a week or do you call them again? I don't call. If somebody's not going to do anything for 10 years, they'll never hear from me again. They'll never hear from me again. The next time they hear from me is when they call me. I'm too busy chasing new deals, new deals, new deals, new deals. All right. Okay. Andy, he had the question about uh, the Skype thing. Okay. He says single dialer. Ask him if he's doing single or triple dialer. He's doing single. My answer is upgrade to a triple and you'll, and the triple cuts through all those bad numbers and all those fax machine numbers. You go straight to a person that talks to you. So upgrade to the triple dialer and keep it moving. And you won't have to worry about fax numbers and Skype numbers because you won't even know that they existed because the triple dollar got you straight to the person that did answer. That was a good number. Let's see. Let's see. Sally says, is Boomtown a good product slash service? I've never messed with it. I think Boomtown is a CRM slash internet lead provider. So I would vote against it but everything works. Okay, guys. So if you have the right mindset that you want to create relationships and really build a long-term business for the, for forever with, with, with buyers and sellers in your area, then anything works. Well, if you have the right mindset and you approach everybody as in, you don't care if they do a deal today, you just want to be there for them with anything they need. And if they do decide to move forward, you want to be their guy or girl, then everything works. If you're going to be high pressure, trying to get people to do stuff left and right, and you're always trying to get people to sign contracts and always trying to ask, Hey, do you want to buy or sell? Then I think that you're going to have trouble, right? And so that's a hard mindset to get around because you need money now, but you'll be surprised because prospects have already decided that, that they want to do a deal or not. They know when they want to do a deal, you're not going to talk them into doing the deal, right? They already know that they want to do a deal now, next week, next month, next year, 10 years, five years, they already know. So it's your job to be likable, to make them feel comfortable, to show them how dependable and hardworking and, and knowledgeable and professional you are. Right. And so that's what next week's coaching session is about. I'm going to teach you how to communicate all of that to your clients and to your prospects so that you can create that lifelong relationship for when they decide to buy or sell. All right. Don't get me hyped up in here. Starting to get a little hype. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to go to Instagram for a second. Catch up here. Uh, let's see. Nick says, what is my most effective approach dialogue for circle prospecting? I'm going to be going over all that. Like I said, in the coaching session next week, after next week's show with Joshua Smith, we're doing an entire coaching session on exactly how to communicate with sellers to effectively, you know, project that, personality that you have and show them how different you are than all the other realtors and really put that relationship in place forever with them. Marky Mark says, any advice on how to get my foot in the door with a builder slash developer? Sell a lot of properties. You know, when you have a track record that you've sold properties and that you're one of the top agents in the area, that opens the eyes of a lot of developers. Um, I tried to get a couple developments early in my career. I didn't have a lot of luck. Now I have a 84 unit development that we're 20 units in right now. And uh, we're, we're selling them as quick as we can build them. And basically it came from the developer just seeing my stats on, online, seeing how many properties I've sold and all that. Uh, and so they called me, we had an interview and we signed the paperwork right then. It was a done deal. So I think that growing that track record over time, 
not being very impatient as far as trying to go after developments really early in your career is pretty key. I think just keep your nose to the grindstone, keep doing deals, keep moving forward, and those developments will come to you. And if you get to a point where you like just want to go after them, call developers, call builders, talk to them, see what you can do to help them, see what see if you can be a resource of some kind, build that relationship for the future, and treat them like a client, take them out to lunch, you know, and really try to make something happen with them. Let's see. Chip says, no one is ready to move until they're ready to move. I once said that, and four months later, I found a house. There you go, man. There you go. I think what you're saying is you agree with me. So tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. Mike Moore says, if a new prospect says maybe sell in three to five years, do you add them to a mail or an email? Absolutely. I'm going to add them to a mail or an email. They're going to be my new clients in three to five years. They are going to be my new clients in three to five years. So yeah, I'm going to stay in touch with them via mail and email. Okay, Jim. <laughs> he agrees. Okay, I don't see any more questions on Instagram or Facebook right this second. So if you have any, type them in. I want to get into some more of my content about real estate being a win-win. So like I said a while ago, everything in real estate works. I want you guys to quit worrying about what CRM you're going to use. You know, should you have a, a, a website? Should you cold call this person? Should you cold call that person? Should you do internet leads? You know, I, I'm tired of hearing all these questions and I want to see more people just doing stuff. Um, everything works. You have to try everything and see what works best for you and then start crushing that. Um, I think everybody's success in real estate is like a fingerprint. Everybody's is different. So there's no cookie cutter system for how to be successful. You have to figure out what works for you. I think the biggest thing is that is essential and is and can be a cookie cutter kind of situation is mindset. I think if you have the mindset around creating relationships with your clients, not pressuring them, uh, making it about them, not about you. For example, I would never say if somebody's not interested in buying or selling, I would never say, hey, who do you know that might want to buy or sell? Because I feel like that's turning it around and making it look like I'm not out for them, I'm out for me. You know, it's like, hey, Mr. Owner or buyer, you can't help me. So do you know anyone else that can help me? And they're sitting there like, who are you? You know, why would I give you, you know, a referral? I don't even know you, right? You have to build a relationship. You have to build a relationship and make them aware that you're there for them, right? You're not there out for you. You really want to truly help them. That's the message I'm trying to get, get across to you guys long term. I'm going to pound it and pound it and pound it in you guys' head. Uh, about this mindset of being there for the client and not there for, to do a deal, not there for you. That's what you have to prove to them. If you do that over enough people and you have a quantity of clients that realize that, that they know you like, you trust you because of who you are, not because you're trying to do a deal. Now you got a real real estate business that's going to be huge, produce huge numbers, sustain market crashes and, and you know, really make it to the top. Um, another thing is closings happen every single day. Closings are happening every day in your market. I don't care where you're at. Closings happen every day. So it's not a problem with the market. There's no shortage of deals. There's plenty of deals to go around. You have to get busy talking to people, right? So let's talk about losing deals. And, and there, uh, uh, here's th something I want you guys to do. I want you guys to type in comment with something that's going on in your business right now that you feel like is a big loss, something that's really holding you back, something that's just not, uh, something that's just really holding you back, that's bringing you down, that you feel like might even take you out of the business or, you know, really knock you off or completely out of real estate. I really want to hear some things that are real, that are coming from you guys that, that you feel like is holding you back. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take those situations, and I'm going to tell you exactly why they're a win, not a loss. Okay, so I'll be waiting on some of those comments. While I'm waiting on a couple of those comments, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Uh, Instagram, we got what content do I send in my weekly email to my clients? New listings, pendings, closed sales, pictures, articles, uh, all, the, all the regular stuff. Let's see, Marky Mark, which calling script 
um, have you had the most success with? I've been using, I have clients looking for a home. Okay, here's a good one, guys. Marky Mark says, which calling script have you had that uh, the most success with? I've been using a, uh, I've been using the script that goes like this. I have clients looking for a home in your area. Would you sell for the right price? And he says, that's been working good for me. Here's why I think that is a very horrible script. Okay, because it sounds like every other real estate agent. Every other real estate agent is out there saying, I have a buyer for your home. Would you be interested in selling? I think that that is a bad play long term. Here's why. I think that number one, some of the property owners that you're that you're talking to, I think that some of them might want to buy. And you're kind of you're almost eliminating that off the table by just asking them if you want to sell. You're not really asking them what you can do to help them buying or selling. You're just saying, hey, I want to do a deal. I want to sell your house. I don't think that's the best move. Now it works. You'll get deals. But here's where here's where I win. And Marky Mark, if he continues doing this, he might make a hundred or two hundred thousand a year. He might get up to three hundred thousand a year doing this. But at some point, he has to switch over to doing it the relationship non-pressure non way to get to the higher level. Because out of say a hundred calls that he uses that script, let's say that he gets he gets maybe a, a deal, right? But then let's say there is like let's say he talked to fifteen people out of a hundred. Let's say that let's say that five of those people, he actually with his personality, he probably could have had a very strong relationship with for the future. Right. But because he came at him with this, I have a buyer thing and I sound like every other agent and, and I'm just trying to do a deal. It turned those people off to his to his personality and his style. So they didn't connect and they didn't give them the email. They didn't say stay in touch and you kind of lost connection with them. What happens, Marky Mark, over time is that those five people that you lost, let's say you let's say you lost two people every time you call. Let's say you make two call sessions. A, 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 let's say you make three call sessions a week, two people a call session. You lose from having this non-relationship phone script. That's six a week. OK, whatever that is a year. That's uh, 6, 12, 24, 240. Let's say 250 people a year. OK, so. So you got 502 years, 750 and three, a thousand and four years, a thousand people that you could have connected with in four years that could be in your sphere is huge. Property owners that own property that you've talked to, that you've connected with, that are in your sphere long term. Okay, you don't you, you don't think two is a big deal, but over four years it's a thousand people. Where would you be if you had a thousand more people in your database that know you like you trust you in four years? Think about that for a second. It's compounding. It's the little things that add up big over time. All right, let's see here. Okay, I got one right here. Uh, circle prospecting generates future deals, correct? What about now deals? If we contact enough people, we'll come across right now deals, right? Right. Circle prospecting produces deals right now and future, right? Having low pressure relationship scripts that build that relationship creates deals now because people have already decided when they want to buy or sell. If they've already decided they want to do it now and they don't have another agent in mind, then boom, you got it, right? So it creates deals now because you're going to run into people because you're calling so many and you create that relationship with all the other people that don't want to do anything right now. That's where all the money's at. That's how you're going to be number one. That's how you're going to make a million dollars. Check this out, guys. Number one in the state. Boom. That's how you get there. By doing what I'm saying. Dom says, how do you circle prospect? Just join. It's just targeting a subdivision, calling the owners and trying to do business by asking them how you can help them. Not if they want to buy or sell, but how can you help them? All right, let's get on back to Facebook. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I'm I'm getting to the bottom of these questions. Let's see. Okay, Mike says, okay, just wanted to, to see what your cutoff is. Okay, that I answered a question of his. Okay. Sally says, how many calls do you try to do daily? I like a hundred a day, every day. 
Um, some people, I'm talking to a lot of people have dollars that are doing 200 a day and some that are doing 250 a day. Um, I say just stay busy. Just stay busy calling people, meeting people, talking to people, doing deals, writing contracts, showing properties, da, da, da. Cindy says, how many deals did you sell last year? Uh, just as a single agent, I did 130. Here's the plaque I got uh, earlier this week. This is me and my dad combined. We're the number one team in transactions and volumes. We did 170 together. I did 130 of those. All right, back to the questions. Andy says, when you pull, when you pull an address to Circle Prospect and Geo Leads, what time frame do you choose as a length of ownership? This is a great question. Andy is asking me, do I, when I'm pulling my my numbers to Circle Prospect? Do I call? Do, do I do I leave out people who have only owned for say a year, only owned for six months, or only owned for two years? And the answer is absolutely not. You call every single owner. You don't care how long they've owned the property. They might want to buy another one. Look, guys, a lot of this stuff is future deals. You know, you know, there's a percentage of deals you're going to do now, and then there's even a bigger percentage you're going to do later, right? So why, why? mark somebody off of a list um, you know that you might connect with that you might actually do something with later that might give you a referral hey you might call them the first time and they're not ready but you had such a good conversation they referred somebody to you within the first week do not take people out of the system because they've only owned for two years a year six months call every single person okay Karen says she went 0 and 3 last uh, three listing appointments. Let me tell you how that's a win, Karen. It's a win because number one, you're gaining experience. Okay. You're gaining experience because you went to these three listing appointments and you talked to these people and now you're replaying in your head about how those appointments went, what you could have done better, what you could have done to actually get it, you know, why you think you didn't get it. Okay. And so that's making you better. Okay, it's making you better because you're replaying, you're thinking about how you could have done something a little different to get that listing. Okay, so you're going to do differently. You're going to be better on the next listing appointment. Okay, that's guaranteed because you're learning because you lost. When you lose, you, you learn. The other part of it is, is that you didn't get one of those listings, so now you don't have to spend any time on that deal. You don't have to spend the time signing the listing, taking the pictures, putting it in MLS, dealing with the agents wanting to show up, putting a sign up, you know, getting a contract, negotiating it, you know, going to meet and pee. You don't have to do any of that. There's a lot of time involved in those listings. Okay. They, you don't just get a listing and that's it. You get paid. There's a lot of work that goes behind it. So now you have new knowledge of why you didn't get it. You learn something, you're going to do better on the next one. And you have all this time back that you don't have to spend on that listing anymore. You didn't get it, but what are you going to do? Sit around and cry about it. You have to take this new knowledge that you learn from losing the listings and this new future time that you got back that you don't have to spend on this listing anymore and go get five more listing appointments and go there and crush those listing appointments because now you learn what you did wrong and now you're going to crush it and get the listings. See, losing those three listings made you better and now you're going to actually get the next three listings. You're going to get the, you lost the last three, you're going to get the next three. That's how you win. It's a hundred percent win-win. If you go to the next listing appointment and you don't get it, it's still a win because you learn something new and you don't have to spend any more time on that. You can you can say, okay, I don't have to spend time there. I'm going to go back to the office and make more calls, and make more appointments and go to more listing appointments so that I can get more deals going on. Um, it's unlimited. <laughs> there's as much as you can handle, right? So because there's an unlimited amount of business, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about losing business. You just replace it with business that is going to go through. You're not going to win them all. You're not going to win every single listing appointment. You're not going to win every single deal. It's not going to happen. So you have to you have to take your losses and you have to learn from them. Take that future time. Use it wisely. Use your new knowledge. Go get five more deals. Let's see. Carol says my entire MLS right now is sitting at 635 properties. 
It is getting challenging as our inventory is super low. Is anyone else experiencing this? So, so um, Carol is asking if anyone else is experiencing really low inventory. And I think everybody is. I think everybody is experiencing very low inventory. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think it's all relative to, you know, how big your area is, population. Carol is in Hawaii. So, you know, she's on an island, so it's probably not as big as some of the, you know, other places in the country, but I think everybody's experiencing low inventory. I think that's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, I think that you stay busy talking to people, asking people what you can do to help them, creating your database, finding people that want to do stuff, people that don't want to do stuff, helping people that do, finding people that connect with you and continuing to stay in touch. You just keep on pressing forward. You don't use these little road bumps. I don't even call it a road bump. It's not even a problem. But a lot of people see it as road bumps. You don't even you don't you don't let that even affect what you're doing or how you're doing it or what your message is or how you're creating business or anything. You don't the market does not matter. It just doesn't matter. Even when the market crashes, guys, people that follow me, when the market crashes, we are going to do just fine because I'm going to teach you. I'm going to, I'm going to coach you through the market crash because it's going to happen in the next two years, three years, five years, 10 years, whenever it happens, it's going to be massive. And most agents are going to leave the business, but not us. I've already been through the crash of the late 2000s. I lost everything I had and I'm going to teach you how to get through it. If that's not a roadblock, if I can make more money during that, if business is unlimited, then there's not an excuse. There's nothing in the market that can hold us back from accomplishing our goals. Nothing. I want you guys to understand that, that there's nothing that can hold you back from accomplishing your goals of how many properties you want to sell, so on and so forth. Okay. Adam says lack of experience against agents have been doing this longer than I've been alive. It doesn't matter, Adam, because you you actually have an advantage because you have time to watch the market a little closer than the older agents, right? They're experienced and they've sold a lot and they have a lot of clients and they have a lot of, you know, relationships with people who buy and sell and they sell a lot of properties. But at the end of the day, they're too busy to watch the market. You can take you can take the, the time that you have. They don't they also don't have time to make phone calls, Adam. Like myself, I don't have time to make phone calls. I'm too busy selling stuff. So you need to take all the time that you have that the older, more experienced agents don't use that time to study the market, stay on top of the new listings and sales and pendings every day. Stay stay fresh on the market every single day and make phone calls to your ears bleed and build your database. It's as easy as that. You're going to find people that want to deal with a newer agent who has time to give them attention as opposed to an, an, an experienced agent who doesn't have as much time and can't really give them as, the attention they need. OK, so just crush it, dude. Like call people, talk to people, get leads, help them buy and sell property, build your database and crush it. It's not that hard. You just have to do it. Let's see. Deborah says she cannot get organized and focused. Well, to that, I say this. I am not organized either. I can't say I'm not focused. I'm super focused. OK, but organization is not my strong point. I'm very unorganized. Here's what I had to do today. This is how this is me being organized. Um, I think that if that's your weak part, the, the organized and focused part, I think the focused part is a problem. You need to really self, self evaluate on the focus part. I think the organized part is not as big a problem. I think the I think the biggest thing maybe is that you don't love real estate. I think that maybe you don't love what you do. If you're not focused on it and you're not trying to succeed, you're not trying to help people, you're not trying to make contact, you're not trying to build your business and you're losing focus. My question is this, what are you focused on? Because you're focused on something, right? I don't know what it is, right? And maybe it's not business, maybe it's not work, but you are focused on something. Maybe it's a hobby, maybe it's a guy, maybe it's uh, a movie. Maybe it's a game on your phone. Maybe it's Facebook. I don't know what. All right. Instagram. My Instagram is about to go. It says uh, 22 seconds remaining. I didn't get to all you guys' questions, so I'm sorry. 
I love you guys very much. Thank you for tuning in. I got 10 seconds left. I wish I could have got to all of your questions. DM me. DM me your questions. I will get back to you. Um, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Love you. All right. We're not on Instagram Live anymore uh, because we went over an hour. Uh, Instagram Live only let you go live for an hour, and that's it. So, but uh, okay, back to Deborah. I don't know what you're focused on, but you are focused on something. You need to figure out what you're focused on. And then from there, figure out why it's not real estate. Because if you're not focused on it, it means you don't love it. I'm not worried about the organization part. I'm more worried about your focus. So, so comment back. Let me know what you are focused on. What is your passion? What do you love? And then I can help you from there. Pettigay says, I'm suffering from migraines right now, but I'm trying to work through them. My health is the only excuse I have right now, but um, that will that will uh, derail my career. I'm optimistic otherwise, though. That's really tough, Pettigay. We're all sending prayers your way because we love you very much. Um, but I would say just hang in there. Do what you can do. Um, try to get better. Try to get your health right. Your health is the most important thing, guys. Health is the most important thing in life, physical and mental health. So do everything you can do to, to get your health right so that you can uh, effectively help your buyers and sellers, your clients, your friends, your family, yourself, everybody. So we're all rooting for you, Pedigate. Please let us know what we can do to help. We love you. All right, here's a long one. Karen Wright says, I wish I could take an experienced agent with me to listing appointments and offer them maybe 25% just to get the listing, but not co-list. The area I need help is getting the listing. I've been told that you haven't, that I guess you're saying if you haven't sold in the 300 range, you haven't sold in this neighborhood. Oh, she's been told that she hasn't sold anything in the 300 range. She hasn't sold anything in this neighborhood. And the third one I lost to a guy who already knew the guy. So that one I'm not so worried about. Karen, who cares about all this? Okay. You have to learn how to play stuff off. Um, you know, if somebody's really worried about all that stuff, they're just not your client right now. Keep moving forward. You're going to run into people who want to do business with you because of your personality and they love you. That's the bottom line. Don't take it so personal. Don't say, oh, because I haven't this, because I haven't that. That was that one client. Okay. Don't worry about it. Keep moving forward. You're going to get them. You're going to get them. And when you get one, then you can say you did that one. But you know, to be honest with you, I just think that there are some people that maybe care about how many you sold and if you sold one in this neighborhood or that neighborhood. <clears throat> but I think for the most part, people don't. The number one thing is likability and making them feel comfortable. So just keep doing what you're doing. Don't lose faith. Don't feel like because you haven't sold anything in 300,000 range or you haven't sold anything in the neighborhood that that's really holding you back because it's not. You need to go into every listing appointment with confidence. You need to feel super confident. Even if you need it, you just need to feel that confidence. That's what's going to win the listings. When you feel comfortable and confident, they're going to feel comfortable and confident with you. And so without that connection, there's not going to be a deal. So quit worrying about all the stuff about you haven't sold this or that and start just feeling confident in the fact that you're there to truly help them that you really care about them and you really want to help them accomplish their goals and start focusing on what their goals are, not to sell the house, but why they want to sell the house. Why do they want to sell the house? Okay. Start talking about that with them. Not do they want to sell? Here's the price. Oh, it looks like this. You should paint this. Have more of a conversation about why they're wanting to sell and try to try to let them know that you're there to help them accomplish that goal. Okay. That's going to separate you from the other agents and that's going to win you more listings. Let's see. Let's see. John says, once you call an area, how long before you call that area back again or revisit those people such as condo complexes or neighborhood? Personally, John, I don't ever call them again. I call one time and that's it. I move on. You can never call all these 
property owners in your area ever in your lifetime, period. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So I'm not going to go backwards. I'm going to continue going forward. Never going to go backwards. And, and I know maybe I should go back <clears throat> and everything, but I'm too much. I'm too much forward moving, man. I got I to gotta get new. I got to get new. The people that didn't answer the first time, you know, they didn't answer for a reason. They just don't answer phones. They don't answer people they don't know. So I don't have really a, a big, there's not really going to be a big percentage of people that didn't answer the first time, answer the second time. So there's just no need in really going back there. I'm going to talk to the people I talk to that answer the phone, do the best I can do with those, and then move forward. <clears throat> Now, as far as calling people back that I had a good conversation with, I don't really do that either. I'll let them call me when they get ready. And so that creates a business where I can just go after new people, new people, new people. And then I've got people calling me back when they get ready. And I can focus all my efforts on new people. Right. And when they do call me, I'm ready. I'm ready to give them 100 percent of me. The world stops. They're the only thing that matters. And every time they call me, they get that. They know that I'm there for them. And then I'm not going to be pushy. I'm not going to call them all the time. And then they're going to get 100% of me. That's one thing I love about being a single agent is that when somebody calls, they get me. They get me. They don't get somebody else. They get me. And that's what a lot of clients love about me and is the reason why they stay with me. Sally wants to ask, Sally has a really good question. Do I ever work from home? That's a negative. I'll do some, um, I'll do some, I'll, I'll write, write books and blogs and Facebook stuff. <clears throat> I'll create some Instagram posts. I'll edit some YouTube videos from home, but I don't do any real estate work at home. I might answer a phone or I might do an email or I might send a contract, but I'm not at home working. I come to the office every day and work from the office. That's it. The office is where I get it done. The office is like a library. I come here, I focus, I'm ready for action. I'm getting it done. I'm selling stuff left and right. Andy says, hitting the phone's hard Monday. I have a 1.2 million under contract right now. Been very busy this last week. That's awesome, man. We are super proud of you. Keep it going. Karen says, thank you, Ricky. You're the best. Franklin Lee says, do I have a script that you use when you call them? I came in late. Are you talking about GLE calling? Yes. Talking about GLE calling Frank. And next week after the, I'm, I'm going to have a podcast next week. Same time as this show with Joshua Smith next Thursday, four o'clock central. After that, I'm going to do our monthly coaching session where I'm going to dive deep into how to communicate with sellers, exactly what to say to create that relationship and that bond for the future, how to effectively follow up with them forever without ever having to call them again. And then we're going to go into door knocking. It's kind of a little bonus, uh, bonus content I'm going to do. Guys, this has been fun. This is like a good old fashioned Ask Ricky Live for those of you who uh, were around when I was doing those. Um, as I said, um, as I don't have guests for the show, which I could have gotten a guest today, but I just kind of chose not to push that um, push the envelope too hard because I wanted to do a one on one session with you guys publicly, not just coaching because I do this for the coaching group, but I go way deeper with everything. Um, but I wanted to do this just so you guys could ask questions and I could tell you about my announcements and uh, kind of just give you my little breakdown about real estate being a win-win. There's no losses in real estate. Everything you do is positive. Everything you do is moving you forward into a better place mentally, physically, everything. Um, there's no losses. Every, I mean, you know, I, I didn't, I mean, I didn't get anything typed in that told me that, the real estate was a loss. Can somebody on this program right now, before I shut it off, comment something that is a loss in real estate? Like, where do you lose in real estate? I mean, you lose a deal, you actually learn something, you get future time back, and you can go get five more deals. If the market crashes, then 
it creates opportunities of, of, of people that want to buy because it's so low. They want to buy before it goes up and people that have to sell because they're in trouble. It creates opportunities. Plus all the realtors leave the business. Okay. The market crashes. The market's good for me. Uh, if I lose a listing, that's great. I learn something. I move on. I'm better. I have future time back. I just keep going. Where, where do you lose in real estate? I'm going to, I'm going to wait for a minute or so. I want to see somebody say something about something that, Somehow you lose in real estate. Closings are happening every single day in your market. Um, you know, there's an unlimited amount of business. Uh, you know, Pettigay says it's always a win. We just have to hang in there. That's it. It's patience. It's working hard, trusting the process and having patience. Remember my four keys to long-term success, guys. Believe. You got to believe. You got to work hard. You got to adapt and be patient. Believe, work hard, adapt, and be patient. You have to have all four of these. I want you to live by these four keys of long-term success because they also bring you tons of short-term success. Sally says, great attitude. Sanity. I almost had a fist fight with the final walkthrough today. Final walkthrough means a closing. So I think that's a win. <laughs> but I, I get what you're saying. Like we have clients that really get on our nerves. Carol says, just kidding. But seriously, Carol, like we, we get clients that get on our nerves, talk a whole lot, are mean to us, treat us like we don't know anything, um, treat us like scum of the earth. We have agents probably in our markets that we have to work with that treat us badly. Um, that we have to deal with and that's just part of the business that is just part of the business and the best way is to be professional let it just roll off your back don't let it bother you know that this is just part of it don't take it personal this is business this is just how it goes and the the, the quicker you learn this the better you're going to do business wise because you may have somebody who you feel like is very mean and you don't like them very much, but if you play it off in a way that, uh, you know, that you, that they feel like that you really care and that they don't really bother you, even though they're being mean, you just kind of laugh it off and stuff. They're going to sit back and say, man, I really like this person. I want to do more deals with them. I want to refer people to them. I'm in it for the long term. You know what I'm saying? So there's always going to be clients like that. You just have to be professional with them. I guess that's a, I guess that's a, a show guys. Um, if you have any last minute comments or last minute questions, please type them in. I still didn't get anything about real estate being a law, a losing deal. Uh, you know, 90% of agents fail in this business and it, it hurts my heart. That's why I'm doing this. I want to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry and I'm going to do it. Um, one speech at a time, one book at a time, one coaching session at a time one webinar at a time, one Facebook post at a time, one Instagram, one YouTube video at a time, I'm going to chip away at the failure rate in the real estate industry. Um, it's a passion of mine. I've had it for a long time and I'm just going to keep on grinding away until I make it happen. I love you guys very much. I want you to know that I really care about you and your success and your life. I want you to do super well. I want everything to work out for, you know, your goals and, um, you know, everybody to just live the life they want to live. Um, I, I want to see it. I want to see, you no, know, I, I went to the Alabama awards banquet and Remax. I had about 11 people come up to me that I did not know that's been following me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and tell me how much I've changed their life and inspired them. And, and it just, uh, it was an amazing, they wanted to have their picture with me and everything. And they read my books, uh, watched my, listened to the podcast. And uh, it was super humbling just to, to have that happen. You know, um, the impact that I'm having on people is, is just been incredible. And uh, I just want to continue bringing you guys value. I'm not in this for me. I'm in this for you. I want you to know that up front. And uh, I'm always going to stay true to it. I'm also always going to be in real estate. What's up, Colin, my boy? 
I'm always going to be in real estate. I'm never going to get out of real estate. Uh, as much speaking as I'm going to do soon, as much coaching, as much writing, as much YouTubing and all that, I'm never going to quit selling real estate. That's where my heart is. Um, <clears throat> I'm always going to sell real estate and I always want to be able to tell you guys that I'm selling. This is what I'm selling. This is what I see in the market. This is what I think you should be doing. I, I want to coach you guys from a standpoint that I'm in it that I'm in the inside, just like you guys struggling to find listings and sales. Where's my next client coming from? Where's my next check coming from? I'm going through the same struggles as you guys. I still go to listing appointments that I don't get. I still have deals that fall through, um, you know, so on and so forth. So I go through the same thing as you guys. I just don't let it affect me. I keep moving forward. I work even hard. When I lose a deal, it makes me work harder. If I have a listing, if I have a client that I thought was my client and then I see their property pop up on MLS with another agent, that fires me up. That makes me make phone calls. That makes me get in here and start grinding away on the phone. When I lose a deal, it makes me create way more business because it motivates me because I don't want to lose another deal. Nobody wants to lose a deal, but it happens. You're not going to win them all. So that's my final thought, guys. Uh, like I said, Love you guys. If there's anything I could do for you, let me know. Um, looking forward to next week's podcast with Joshua Smith and the coaching session afterwards with the Zero to Diamond group. Um, if you're not part of the coaching group and you would like to be, just send me, a, send me a message and I'll make sure to get you whatever discount I got going on and um, get you in there because it's going to be pretty epic. All right, guys, I got to go to a party for my broker because he hit the circle of legends for Remax uh, Monday, which is 10 years, at least 10 years in the business and 10 million in commissions in his Remax career. So we're going to celebrate that. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that tonight. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out. Much love. Grind hard. Sell stuff and holler at me if you need something.